Good evening. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Butt Down Fellowship. Uh, good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, hope everybody had a good holiday. Uh, we're all here, so all the, we were safe in some aspect. Uh, so we're all here. Good to yeah. see everybody. We didn't lose anything. Uh, we were just talking about we uh, a couple people lost some limbs, you know, dealing yeah. with the fireworks and those things. So it was unfortunate. Uh, but I, I was popping some, and it was fun. Uh, <laughs> I took, took safety safety precautions though. So, uh, but uh, good to see you all here. Uh, thank you all for the prayers for my safe travel. Yeah. Uh, it's good to see family, uh, and so now we're back to business. Uh, my mother's actually still down there. She stayed, and she's actually going to be leaving tomorrow. So just continue to pray for her. Uh, so uh, she just she stayed down there. Uh, thank God for uh, all of you. Also, uh, just some prayer requests. Uh, the uh, Al, you guys know Al that comes here, who yeah. works with me. His uh, father had surgery uh, on. Friday that was, I talked to him when I was in Miami, he called me, and uh, then he called me on Saturday, he said he, he came out of surgery, and he, he was doing well, so uh, I haven't seen him at work though this week, so he must be still out uh, sitting with his father, so let's, let's pray for him and his father, uh, and that family as well, uh, also uh, uh, just continue to pray for one another, we, uh, we know prayer keeps our hearts soft towards God and towards man, continue to pray for myself, Pastor L. Page, pray for the ministry, uh, and let's continue to uh, pray that God give us strength to be able to be a ambassadors of Christ in this lost and dying world. Uh, other than that, we have uh, we're going to have another straight talk also for a couple of announcements. We're going to have a straight talk on the 24th. Okay, uh, Jared works at the Boys and Girls Club, so I, we're actually going to. No, I'm sorry, the YMCA. I'm looking at her shirt that says Boys and Girls Club, <laughs> but uh, the YMCA. And so we're going to go over there on Friday, myself and Jared, and have the setup of a straight talk to kind of get the, that group involved. So when we advertise and have it here, we'll have a bigger turnout. And so we're, we're myself and Jared are going to go over there Friday. Uh, the deal is about 15 kids, 15, 20 kids there. So we're going to uh, just talk with them. And the straight talk uh, is just where we, uh, the, all the questions are anonymous. The young people can ask questions. Uh, we'll, it doesn't have to be about the Bible. Uh, of course, at the end, we always give them the gospel uh, in a way that they can be saved and know how they're saved. Uh, but the questions, they, uh, the last time we had it, the questions about, you know, um, marriage, uh, how do you date somebody, credit, uh, how to obtain good credit and all. So it's a lot of different questions to help young people that oftentimes you can't, some things you can't really tell your parents. Or you, you may not be, you may be ashamed to tell people. So but if the questions are anonymous, nobody knows who's asking then you can get your questions answered. So uh, we'll do that. We'll have a uh, Friday night. We'll be going there to the YMCA. And then on uh, the 24th is when we'll have our official straight talk here. Uh, so anything else that I missed? Anything else that I missed? Okay. Yeah, now to the young people, um, you can send them our way off. So it's on 110 East Farm Avenue, the YMCA, downtown Central City. Yeah. Once, yeah, if you guys have uh, from 5:30 to what was 7:30? Yeah. 5:30 to 7:30. If you guys have anybody for Friday night, uh, it's short notice, but we're gonna kind of go down there and do that for the YMCA because Jared deals with them a lot, you know, hands on. So uh, it's, it's only right that we go there and do that uh, for them. So 5:30 uh, to 7:30. 5:30 to 7:30. Yeah. So uh, if nothing else. We will uh, go ahead and dive into the word. Go ahead and turn to First Thessalonians five. First Thessalonians five. Uh, we're still talking about the end times. Uh, we're still talking about the end times. We uh, hear a lot of stuff uh, uh, dealing with the end times and how uh, people are, are, are uh, uh, saying that the prophecy is happening now in our day and things that you know we hear about wars and rumors of wars and so. Uh, that means Jesus is coming back. We're gonna we're going to the tribulation, and you know, you hear all these different things. But uh, obviously, the Word of God is our final authority, and we're gonna go through this, studying the Word of God, uh, uh, to give us insight and to give us uh, understanding of this particular topic about eschatology. Uh, eschatology is just a, eschatology is just a study of end times. That's what that means. Uh, but look at First Thessalonians five, and we read this, covered this the last time, but we're gonna go through. Uh, here it says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. 
for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Uh, emphasis on the day of the Lord. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in what? Darkness, that, the, that they should overtake you as a thief. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for our sins, uh, that we may have salvation as a, as a present possession, and we may have the gift of eternal life. Father God, we uh, thank you for who you are and what you've done. Father God, we thank you for the mind of God, uh, the, the mind that was in Christ is also in us. Uh, we thank you that, uh, that we're seeking the things above, not the things on the earth. Help us to get the strength not to be so uh, caught up in the, in the affairs of this world, oh God, but help us to uh, keep the mind and the focal point on you, Christ. And the it's the love of Christ that constrained us. Uh, not so that we live selfishly unto ourselves, but Father God, that we live for the one who died to save us. Uh, we thank you for that right now. We ask you, uh, pray for those who are sick in our midst. Pray for those who are dealing with the lo loss of loved ones, uh, the surgery, the loved ones who have gone through surgery, uh, just the aching uh, bodies and pain that we go through each day. He heal us and give us strength more importantly because your grace is sufficient even in our weakness. Uh, when we're weak, that's when we're made strong. So we thank you for your grace for it is sufficient for all that we do and all that we go through. We ask that you uh, pray for marriages. Uh, touch uh, marriages everywhere. Uh, bless those who are of the household of faith. Uh, give us strength that as we go through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so 1 Thessalonians 5, and we're, and we're talking about the end times. Uh, and, and, and oftentimes, the, uh, and I was stating this the last time, the biggest problem in Scripture is always the same problem for most folks, and that is that they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Everything can be solved. Every confusion can, in, that you have in the word of God can be solved by just rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, so when you're dealing with the end times, there are some people who think that we're, the body of Christ is going to go through the tribulation, that the rapture will happen uh, during the tribulation, uh, mid-tribbers. There's some that think that post-trib, that the rapture happens after the post-trib. And then there's uh, pre-trib, who is us, the... Uh, uh, those of us who are in the body of Christ who understand doctrine today. Now, for you to think that the trip, the rapture is going to happen mid-trib or post-trib, let's let's uh, let it should let you know that they don't rightly divide because what they're saying is all of this scripture is all the same, and it's all talking to everybody, and everybody's going to go through it. But there are certain things when you rightly divide. There's a mystery program that God had hid in Himself. That is entirely different from prophecy, from that which was spoken in the time past and that which is spoken in the ages to come. God started something over here that he will and must finish because he's a God that cannot lie. Right. The dispensation we live in today has nothing to do with what God promised over here because our dispensation was kept secret since the world began. Right? So when God was dealing with the nation of Israel with the law and their promises and covenants, he's going to give, a, give them a new covenant which will happen out here. But we're not under any laws and any covenants today, Ephesians 2 and 11. Right? We're not under any laws or covenants today. So, we, so there's a program that was started and will be finished that is, has nothing to do with the program we're in today. Right? And now, so the program that started and has to finish, obviously if it was started, it has to have an ending. Right. Our program had a beginning point on the road to Damascus with the right. Apostle Paul. And so for our program to have a starting point with Paul, that means it could not have started back here. That means we also have to have an ending point. And our ending point is the catching away of the body of Christ, 1 Thessalonians 4, right? So now, what we see here, when we read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul is talking about the times of the seasons. Now, he just ended 1 Thessalonians 4 talking to us about how the Lord will meet us. We will meet the Lord in the air and comfort one another with these words. He says that uh, I would not have you be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep. He's telling them that, listen, that those in Christ, in Christ the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet them in the air. That's our program. That's the ending of the body of Christ program, the dispensation of grace. That's the ending of it. That's how it ends. 
Now, Paul is going to go on after he tells it how it ends. He's going to go on in chapter 5 and say, Now, of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I what? Did I write unto you? For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the what? Night. Thief in the night. Now, when is the Lord going to return? That is the million dollar question, right? It depends on what program you're part of to understand when he's going to come back. Now, he's not coming back to step foot in the Mount of Olives to come back to get us. That's what prophesied in Zechariah and will be fulfilled out here after the tribulation. Now, for our program, it says that he appeared unto Paul, right? And when he was in his glorified state on the road to Damascus. And he's also going to appear again when he catches us away. He's never coming back to step foot on the earth for this dispensation, right? So now, so, but of this time and seasons, Paul says, I have no need that I even write unto you about that. Now, go to Daniel chapter 2. Go to Daniel chapter 2. And look at verse number 20. Daniel chapter 2, look at verse number 20. Do we have it? No. Uh, let's start at verse 19 for a little context. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the Time. times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know what? Understanding. Understanding, right? Now, as we look at this, we understand that the times and the seasons were prophesied or given to Daniel in a night vision. Right now, as we as you continue to read through the book of Daniel, there's some things that God is going to tell Daniel at this time. Close this book up until it's to be opened up out here. Right now, so what he's saying here is that the times of the seasons has to deal with what God is doing with the nation of Israel. It has nothing to do with the body of Christ. Daniel was a prophet of the nation of Israel. Right. So so now. Also, there's times and seasons, and, and the next thing is this kingdom that's being talked about, right? When Jesus came, he came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He came saying, because the, Luke 16 and 16 says, the law and the prophets were until John. And, every, and uh, the law and the prophets were until John, and since that time, they got, the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and, and the... Uh, the gospel of the kingdom is being preached and every man there present into it, which is Jesus Christ. And to and receive a kingdom, there must first be a king. So when Jesus came, he came made of, made of a woman born under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Who was under the law? Israel. So that's why he came. So now he's coming to set up this kingdom. But when is the kingdom going to be set up and for who? Right? Now, go to Acts chapter 1. Go to Acts chapter 1. When you study scripture, you must get the context of scripture. You have to know who it's talking to, what dispensation, and then who wrote it. That will give you better and fuller understanding of scripture. Look at Acts 1 and look at verse 4. And being assembled together with them. Now, let's read verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. Now, who is the them here? The apostles, church. Uh, the apostles, right? And, the apostles. and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom. kingdom of God. So he's speaking to the apostles about this kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now, this is a commandment now. But wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, 
ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Mm -hmm. Notice it does not say and fire here. Mm -hmm. Right? What he's quoting is Matthew 3 and 11, but notice it does not say and fire. Because Jesus was not going to baptize the believing remnant with fire. That's for unbelieving Israel out here. But he was going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the what? Kingdom, kingdom to who? Israel. Israel. So Israel is waiting on a kingdom. And Daniel chapter 2, we saw that God will set up kings and tear them down. Right? He The governmental positions that each person has has everything to do with God setting the office up. Now, the people in it are elected by, you know, when you have votes and all those things. So the person that sits in the office may not be who God wants to be there necessarily. Or they may not be following the things of God. But the office was established by God. He'll set up and he'll take them down. Right? So understand, Israel is waiting for this kingdom that was prophesied to them way back in Daniel. And it's going to be restored to Israel. So nobody today, we're not looking for the kingdom of heaven to come to earth. Why? Because where is our rest, eternal resting place? In heaven. We don't, we're not looking for anything to come down from heaven. We're going up. Right? So when you rightly divide, you see these things right now. Look at verse 7 here and watch what he tells them. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the what? The times or the seasons which the Father had put in his what? His own power. His own power. Now, in 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul reiterates this to the body of Christ. Now, Israel didn't need to know at that point, but it was pertaining to them. Paul is saying we don't need to know because it's not even pertaining to us. You see, that, that day it, 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 that day is going to come as a thief, for, but ye yourselves know. Very well. We know very well that this has nothing to do with us. Why? Because we're not in darkness. We're in light. Because we know who Christ is. We know what he's done on the cross. And we know that eternal means how long? Forever. Forever. So we're not in the darkness about, oh, when is he coming back? Because whenever he comes back, we're waiting on his appearance. That's our hope of glory. Amen. Right? That's the hope that we're waiting on. So why would I be afraid? That's just like your boss saying that, listen, you're going to get this promotion. You're going to get this promotion. So every time your boss comes around, you're not looking like, oh, man, I might get the pink slip. Yeah. <laughs> when he comes around, you're looking, you're waiting for him to say, the day is the day yeah. right. that you get that promotion. I, I was telling you about it, but today is the day. That's how we're waiting on Christ to come. We're not worried about the signs of the times of things that's going to happen after we're gone. Why, why, would, why would you be worried about that? You see that? I think that uh, people, they're going to be afraid because they're not sure if they're going to heaven or hell. There you go. There you go. And that's, a, that, that's, that's really what it is. I was asking a young lady uh, at, at my job the other day, uh, last week, and I said, do you know, I said, if you were to die today, do you know for the surety whether you'll go to heaven or hell? I said, whether you go to heaven, do you know for a fact that you're going to heaven? She said, well, I can't, really, I can't really say because I don't really know. And I said, well, I said, I said uh, so you don't think God ever instructed us to, to, that we would know? You don't think he wants us to know for sure? And she said, no, because, you know, it's a lot of things that, you know, we got to make sure we're doing the right thing. You know, we got to do this and do that. And I said, listen, let me give you, and, and, and the reason I said that, and, I, and, you know, I always tell you guys, good news is only good in the light of bad news. You see that? Good news is, is, is not good unless there's bad news to go with it, right? Because otherwise it would just be news. So, uh, so I allowed her, I asked her these questions, and she just was not sure. And I said, well, you know, when she said, well, there's things that we have to do. I said, now, you know that no matter what we do, we'll never get to heaven based on what we do. I said, because God is perfect now, so if we're going to go to heaven, we have to be perfect too. And she's like, ah. I said, but let me give you something that you can know for an assurity that you're going to go to heaven. 
you can know from the surety. I said, is Christ perfect? She said, yeah, Jesus was perfect. I said, if we're found in Christ and he's perfect, his blood covers our sins, and now we're perfected to God because we're found in Christ. It's not about what you can do or what you can, don't do or what you can do. It's not about that. Salvation and eternal, the eternal gift is all about what Christ did. And if we believe and trust in that or not. Now, after that, you can know for the surety that you're saved. You don't have to worry yourself about all this stuff out here. About the looking at the signs of the times and, oh, this stuff happened over there in this country. This, you don't have to worry about that. Now, should you be aware? Sure. I'm not telling you not to be aware. But I'm saying don't worry yourself about things that do not pertain to you. Jesus is telling them here, it's not for you to know about that. Just do what I'm asking you to do. He just gave them instructions, commanded them in verse 4, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, ye have heard of me. That's what they should have been doing. But, you know, we always get a little curious sometimes. and We just have to ask that question, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, and they're not and simultaneous in scripture. This was a church that had this on their they, they billboard. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, so people get misinformation, mm -hmm. and you know, they're giving. It's dangerous to, to constantly be giving people that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And they people not really trying to learn the truth. They're not. They're not. And when you talk, the most baffling thing I was just telling Jared, I had a conversation with some uh, some guy who believes he's an apostle. Uh, he said, I, I should have approached him uh, as an apostle the right way. And so I said, well, how should I have approached you? And I gave him Galatians 2 and 11 when Paul said, I withstood Peter to the face because he was to be blamed. I said, now, would you rather me have approached you like that? Because you are to be blamed right now because what you're teaching is false. <laughs> and so, you know, he kicked me off the page and <laughs> blocked me. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but I said that to say this thing. I, I saw also another person on there that said that it said people ask about water baptism. The scripture says to repent and be baptized. That's water. So if we're supposed to do that and you ask the question, are we to be water baptized? There's no need to ask, ask a question. Just do it. And that's how he summed up whether or not you should get baptized or not. But and again, it's because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. When you don't rightly divide the word of truth, then you're, it, Jesus said, Matthew 15, 14, it's like the blind leading the blind, and they all should fall in the ditch. It will sound good. And yeah, it, it sounds good. You know, it, it stimulates the flesh, you know, and people people like that. They, they gravitate towards that, uh, uh, that satisfaction of the flesh and the feelings and emotions because I feel good. The word of God is, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's not going to always make you feel good, but it's always for your good. And see that? If you know truth. Now, of this same kingdom that they were asking about that was to be restored, God gave them signs that they should look for. That's why we, we're not living in a sign dispensation. The signs were for who? Israel. There is no more Israel because why? There is neither what? No, Jew no, nor no, Gentile in the body of Christ. Right. So if there's no more Israel, there's no more signs. That's why Paul can unequivocally say in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not looking for any times and seasons. God gave you eyes to see the natural, not the spiritual. Right? So we're not looking for that. Go to Matthew 24. So when you're focusing on when the Lord will return, understand that the times and the seasons and the worrying about if the kingdom is going to be restored, that has nothing to do with you. Paul says in the first Thessalonians 5, 1, of the times and the seasons, you have no need that I write unto you. Look at Matthew 24. Look at verse number... Twenty-nine. Matthew 24, verse 29. 
immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Is that a sign? Can you Are you going to be able to see that? Absolutely. And the moon shall not give her what? And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be what? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in where? Heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great what? Glory. So he, they're going to see him coming down. These are the signs. The moon's going to be darkened. And all this. We're not living in those times now. Exactly. That is the sign. Right? Now, in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul gave us what he's going to do. He's going to come uh, uh, with the voice of the, with the, of the trump, of the, uh, with the, uh, of the archangel, and he's going to come and meet us in the air. It's totally different than this here. It's totally different than this right here. Now, nobody would even know the day of the hour. And if nobody knows the day of the hour, then can you be snuck up on? Absolutely. That's why Paul said to 1 Thessalonians, I have no need to, uh, to write to you about these times and seasons, for you yourself know that day, day of the Lord shall come upon them as a thief in the night. It can sneak up on them, but not us, because we're not in darkness anymore. We're in light. We understand. But there are some people who are fearful about this time out here because they're ignorant of the fact that they don't, they, they're not going to, they don't have to go through it. You don't have to go through it, right? Look at, uh, drop down to verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth who? No man. No man. No, not the angels of heaven, but who? My father only. But my father only. Look at verse 37. But as the days of Noah... That's uh, Noah, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Did anybody know about the flood back here? Nope. They, they were marrying, they were doing working, they were doing whatever they were doing back here, and they had no clue. Right. And everybody just wiped out. That's out here. So they yeah. also came suddenly. What's that? And it also came suddenly that it come gradually. Yes, it did. Come beating on those doors and getting their share. That's it. Right now. And they thought he was crazy because he followed the instructions of the Lord. I was going to say he always left a believing remedy. He always left somebody who knew. Oh, yeah. And because in Genesis it says Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Right. He knew. He found grace in the eyes of God. Right? Why? Because he was obedient to the instructions God gave him. That's what we have to follow. Now, so when we ask when will the Lord return, Paul answers that question for us as far as this is concerned in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and seasons, brothers, you have what? No need that I write unto you. There's no need. Go back to 1 Thessalonians 5. And you hear people say all these little gimmicks and sayings and phrases and you know this, all this philosophical uh, 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 flutter about nothing. Time about you know yeah the time is coming the Lord you know he's going it's going he's going to come he's going to catch you in your sleep he's going to catch no 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 he's not that's out here. We know perfectly that the day of the Lord is so coming as a what a thief in the night. Now, what is this day of the Lord? Day of the Lord. Now, turn over to 2 Thessalonians 2, and I'll get to this next, but I want you to see something here. So it says the day of the Lord there. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2, and look at verse 2. Paul, was, let's start at verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not so not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by uh, spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is what? Amen. Now, is the day of the Christ, is the day of Christ and the day of the Lord the same thing? No. 
You sure? Yes, sir. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It should be the same. Yes. It should be the same? Yeah, yeah, the same. Well, what All right. Huh? Now, what do I always say? The things that are not, the things that are not, the things that are different cannot what? Cannot be the same. So if it says day of the Lord and day of Christ, are those things different? Yes. So can they be the same? No. no matter how similar things are, is Christ the Lord? Yes, yes he is. Yes. No matter how similar things may be, the way things are worded in Scripture is for a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's for a reason. So don't just mark the similarity off as if they're the same. You see that? You don't, that's the first mistake. You have to rightly divide everything. You have to rightly divide everything. Right? Now, Go back to 1 Thessalonians uh, 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 5. So now, Paul is telling us that he has no reason to write unto us about the times and the seasons. And he says that we know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Right? Now, when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction shall come upon them. But we're not overtaken in darkness, and that they should overtake us as thieves. But the day of the Lord, to the people who have to go through it, it will overtake them as a thief in the night. So what exactly is this day of the Lord? Uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 2. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 2 because this is a prophetic term. Go to Isaiah chapter number 2. Look at verse number... Verse number 10. Isaiah 2, and look at verse number 10. Do we have it? Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. For fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of men shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in what? Amen. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up. And he shall be what? Wow. Brought low. So the day of the Lord is a day of what? Humbling. There's going to be a lot of people being humbled out here. It's a day of humbling, right? Go to uh, Isaiah chapter 13. Go to Isaiah chapter 13. Now, who wrote this book? Isaiah, he was a prophet to Israel. Who was he writing to? Yeah. To Israel. And what dispensation was he writing this? The dispensation of the law. Right? Time passed. Right? So now, these instructions about this day of the Lord have to do with a people <coughs> that is not the body of Christ. This is talking to Israel. Why? Because as we're going to get to it, the body of Christ does not have to worry about the day of the Lord. Because this time in the seed that in this season, we have no need that we even be written to about it. But we study it, and we, we understand that we don't have to go through, right? Because we understand that God did not appoint us to wrath. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. When I, asked, I asked a person the other day, I said, are you saved? They said, yeah, I'm saved. I said, well, what are you saved from? Exactly. They said, I'm saved. I said, well, for, for what? What is saved? What does that mean? Because a lot of times we are taught certain things that we really have no idea what they really mean. What does it mean to be saved? What are we saved from? We're saved from the wrath to come. Right? We're justified. Justification means to be declared righteous before God the minute we trust in the shed blood of Christ and he died to pay for sins and then he rose again. We're justified. Right? 
But we're saved. You can be saved from sickness. You can be saved. Salvation is a, it, you can be saved from a lot of things. You can be saved from an accident. You can be saved. You can be saved from a lot of things. Now, when it talks about salvation as it pertains to Scripture, what we're saved from or delivered from is the wrath to come. Right? We're not appointed to this out here. So we're saved from that. Why? Because God commended His love toward us, and what? And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And being enemies from, and when we were enemies with God, he reconciled himself to us. So much more, being in Christ, is are we going to be saved from wrath? If we were enemies and God thought about us, surely if we're in Christ, we're not going to go through this wrath. Because remember the tribulation is called in Jeremiah 30 and 7, the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob in scripture? Right? Well, he well, he's Israel, but he's the grandson of Abraham. Right? Abraham and Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Israel had how many sons? Twelve. And we now know them as the what? Twelve tribes of Israel. So Jacob, when it's used in scripture, talks about Israel and their sinful state. But when it talks about Israel of God, it talks about them in their spiritual state. Right? Now, there is no more Israel of God today. We're not spiritual Israel like most people make us to be. But we're the what? Body of Christ because there's neither Jew nor Gentile today. But back here there was. And so all of these signs of the times and all of these things that are being prophesied are being prophesied to and about the nation of Israel. So if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, there's going to be confusion and also fear. You see that? But Paul says, comfort one another with these words. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, that's 1 Thessalonians 4 and 18. Right after that, after he says, comfort one another with the words of knowing that we're going to be caught away before any of this. He says, but of these times, I have no need that I write unto you. For this day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. But we're not in the night. We're in light. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a day of humbling. And look at Isaiah 13. Look at uh, verse uh, 4. Isaiah 13, verse 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 says, I will set up kings and I will... Tear down kings, right? We just read that. But, but listen to this. All these nations are going to be gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustered the hosts of the battle. They come from a, a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the what? Oh, Excuse me. How ye for the day of the Lord is what? It shall come as a destruction from who? Go, drop down to verse number 9. Behold the day of the Lord, what? Amen. Cruel both with what? Wrath, Wrath and fierce what? Amen. Hold on now. You know when people say that, you know what, because you did that, God is going to punish you? That's not what God is doing today. Mm -mm. Understand his anger and fierce anger and wrath is going to come when? The day of the Lord. God is not punishing you for your sin today. He's died on the cross for that already. Now, will, will we still commit sin? Yes. yes, we will because sin dwells in our flesh. But well, So that goes unpunished? No, because there's consequences for your actions while you're here on earth. Mm -hmm. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Right? So what you go through on this side when you what your sins, plural, because your sin, he died and paid for that. Mm -hmm. But your sins, which are plural, that you will commit, will not lose, will not cause you to lose or miss heaven. Amen. Right? But there will be consequences for your sin. And that consequence has nothing to do with wrath and fierce anger from God. Amen. Has nothing to do with that. But understand, this wrath and fierce anger is going to come when? The day of the Lord. 
the day in which we don't have to even hear about. You see that? Look at, uh, finish that verse there. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land what? Yes. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof what? Are you a sinner because you sin? Or do you sin because you're a sinner? Sin because you're a sinner. Huh? Yeah. Right. That's good. That's good. Now notice that all have fallen short of the glory of God. Sin. Oh, what? Sin. What's that? Sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Right? So understand, you are a, by one man's sin, Adam, Adam death has been passed upon all. Mm -hmm. Right? So all of us are sin. We sin because of what? Because of Adam. We have this sinful flesh. Now, so understand this, but this says that in this time, the day of the Lord, he does destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So if all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, he's going to destroy everybody. Is that right? Now, understand. There, just like back here, there were provisions for their sin. Mm -hmm. Our sins today are totally forgiven. Mm -hmm. Right? There were provisions for their sin through the, the blood of bulls and goats. Right. There were sacrifices that they had to make, right? Mm -hmm. So understand, there were provisions, but they were temporary. Mm -hmm. Out here, when God brings them the new covenant to Israel, that's when they'll have their sins taken away. That's out here. We're not waiting for our sins to be forgiven. We receive the atonement now. They're waiting on the National Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. That's their program. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Otherwise, you'll be lost. Right? Look at verse 10 here. And, and, the, and the covenant is when he writes the law in their hearts. On their hearts yep. and minds. Yep. And there'll be no need to teach the, the, your brother because every man from the least of them shall know him. Why are we sitting here teaching today? Because some people put us under this new covenant. Why would I need to teach you if we're under the new covenant? Because you'll know him just like me. That's what the scripture says. <laughs> but yet we're sitting here teaching, learning from each other. But you know, they, like you always say, they take part of it even how they want to. Yeah, yeah. Because they still get that money. Yeah, yeah, because it's all about the money. Israel, now, now this program was very lucrative. Because Paul says, I profited in the Jews' religion. Why do you think these preachers are profiting today? They're in the Jews' religion. Right. You see that? It, there's money in it now. It's a lucrative business. Right? That's why Jesus had Matthew 21. He went in to the, uh, the temple the, the temp and overthrew the money changers. He says, you guys have made this a den of thieves. This is supposed to be a house of prayer. Because remember now, tithes back then was not money. Right. Type was the land, the type of corn, the crops. And what they would do, Deuteronomy 14, it says that they would have to sell their type for money. So if type was money, like these people suggest today, then it would say, sell thy money for money. But it says, if the journey be too long, sell thy type of money, and then buy it back when you get there. So what they would do is, once they got to Jerusalem, there were money changers there, they would go ch change the money for the tithe to offer as a sacrifice. But what the money changers was doing was taxing people. Mm -hmm. Like how they do today. Mm -hmm. Right? They, they're taxing people. So what they were doing was they were overcharging people. I thought they were putting their thumb on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were overcharging people. So Jesus saw that he overthrew it. You see that? So listen, when you when, when, when it talks about these certain things, they're in the Jews' religion. But understand now, if you're going to take the blessings, you have to take the curses. Uh -huh. Oh, we're not under a curse today. No. Jesus came and died. No. We're not under a curse. No. They'll be quick to say that. Yeah. If you're not under the curse, you're not under the blessing either out here because it wasn't talking to you. Right? Now, Go, so, so, it, it, so the day of the Lord is a day of humbling, and it's a day of destruction also for these sinners, right? Go to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. Isaiah 
Well, upon the land and sinners. Uh huh. Because it says that the land shall be desolate and the sinners thereof shall be destroyed. Look at Isaiah 34. Look at verse number. Uh, start at verse 1. Come near ye nations, plural, to hear and hearken ye people. Now, come near ye what? Nations. 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 Who was that? The Gentiles, right, at that time. To do what? Hear and hearken ye who? Now, who are the ye people? Same people. Okay, uh, same people? All right. You think so? All right, now, let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth, what? For the indignation, what is indignation? Anger. Of the Lord is upon what? All nations. all nations. And his fury upon all their armies. He had utterly destroyed them. He had delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their what? Yeah. Wow. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in what? Heaven. Heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia, and upon the people of my curse to what? To judgment. To, judgment. to where? To yeah, judgment now. Judgment. Look at verse uh, 6 here. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord had a sacrifice in Bozrah and a great slaughter in the land of Edomia. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the, the day of the Lord's what? And the year of recompense is for the controversy of Zion. All of this is out here. These are going to be the things that are happening out here that are not happening today. Hey, yeah. when you read all that, man, it seems unfair, man. It seems harsh, but he gave us a lot of time to get that right, bro. Well, he gave them a lot of time. He yeah. gave them a lot of time. Yeah, he gave them a lot of time to get it right. Even gave them an extra year that was not even.